Hello, welcome to Tim Anderson Horse Training. Today my farrier is cutting straight bar stock steel and he's going to make it into Rainer slide plates. The craftsmanship that goes into this is amazing to watch. I hope you enjoy. Stay tuned. So here what he's doing, he's measuring out the shoe, measuring out the bar stock, and making a mark in the center. This will be the center of the toe, the center of the shoe. When he goes to shape the shoe, you'll see he'll start at the center and work his way out. There's a good look of the what the bar stock looks like before he starts. Put it in the fire and get it started heating up. I believe this forge heats up to about 2,000 degrees. It gets really hot in there. So after the bar stock gets hot, he watches for it to be a certain color red. Now the first shape he's going to make is at the toe. He starts shaping at the middle and works his way out. Makes his initial bend at the toe, now he flattens it back out. This bar stock is one inch wide and five sixteenths thick. He cuts the length of the bar stock depending on how long we want the shoes to be. I, since we show our Raiders in cow horse, I don't have as much trailer sticking out the back as what a lot of people do, uh, as what a lot of straight Raiders do. So the shoes aren't as long sticking out past the the horse's heel is what some people do. So now he's got that first bend right in the middle. Now what he's going to start doing, he's shaping it all around. First bend was right at the top, now he kind of shapes it around a little bit. The other thing he's going to start doing is the sides of the shoe, he's going to start tapering that back. He kind of draws that metal out towards the end a little bit. What we need is we need that Raider, that shoe to be a slick shoe, but we need the, the trailers of it right at the heels to kind of be open and tapered out so that as the horse slides, he can, that dirt comes out from behind the heel and doesn't get trapped in there. So that's what he's doing there. He's working on those, the, um, the sides of the shoe getting it tapered down a little bit so that by the time he pulls the shoe all the way around there's a, a space in the back so that the dirt can come out as the horse is sliding. He heats it up and bends it around a few times. Now he's getting it on around a little bit more to what you think of as a horseshoe shape. He'll beat it flat again starting to take a little bit of the look of a horseshoe but you still see it's still pretty wide. As he shapes it around into the shape that he wants he's steady beating it back flat again. He all, he's always shaping from the, two, the toe back. There's where I'm saying where he's kind of drawing those sides out a little bit. You can see where the, as that shoe comes down the sides, it gets narrower to the back than it is in the front. really close to the shape we want right there. Uh, 
there's a lot of work that goes into the sides and the heels of the shoe. I know me and him have, have talked a lot about the Rainers and what they need. I can tell him what my horse is doing when it's stopping and or I can take a picture of what the slide tracks look like and he can make adjustments to that shoe that will help whatever we're talking about. And on the, the heels, the back of the shoe, you want the inside width wide enough so that dirt can come out as the horse is sliding, but you don't want them sticking so far outside the shoe that the horse steps on it with his other back foot. So there's a really low degree of tolerance right there for that shoe to do what it needs to do and not be in the way. So he's still working on the heels right there, getting the right shape. Getting them just right. You see, as he gets that shoe closer and closer to where we want it, he's making finer adjustments and he's hitting that shoe a little bit easier as we get closer. See right there, he just bent the two, the two uh, sides of the shoe out so he could beat out on that, the heels a little bit more, draw them out just a little bit more. See how it's getting narrower, narrower as it gets to the end of the shoe. That's going to give us what we want on the shoe so that that dirt can slide out of the middle as the horse is sliding and it won't stick out on the sides of the foot for him to step on the shoe with the other foot. And what he's doing here, that is where he's going to be putting the nail holes in. So tapping it right there by where the nail holes are going to be punched does something to the metal. I think it makes it a little bit denser where the nail holes are going to be. And now that he tapped it on the side, he's got to hit it back flat again. Always making it flat. again right there where the nail holes are going to be and right there he's hitting it on the toe he kind of flattens the toe out just a little bit so that it when it's on the horse's foot the uh, it almost works like a ski it's not really turned up in the front but the front is beat down right there at the toe so that it's just a little bit thinner than the rest of the shoe and that helps the horse stay on top if he hits any imperfections in the, the dirt when he's sliding. I'm not a big fan of doing anything real drastic on the toe. I know some rainers do. I, I don't. Um, I'm a big believer in if the horse can stop, the horse can stop. And we more more trying to do things with the shoe to stay out of the way of the horse stopping than we are anything to make the horse stop bigger. Now that mark he just did was marking left and right. He makes a mark on the shoe so that he knows which is the left and which is the right. Now he's gonna go put the shoe on the horse and do a test fit, see how close it is. Checks it for fit, burns it in just a little bit, and now he'll go back and make any adjustments that he needs to make. Okay, here he is starting to punch the nail holes. If you notice when he when he's punching these nail holes, he's punching onto the the flat side of the anvil, it's flat there. There's no hole underneath the nail where the nail hole is going to be. We'll show that to you in just a minute. So as he punches the hole, and that, what he's dipping the 
hammer in when he goes down to the bottom of the anvil. That's something to help keep the the punch from sticking in the shoe when he hits it. Now it beats it back flat again. When he punches those holes, he punches it onto the solid part of the anvil. And then after he cools the shoe, there's like a little paper thin piece of metal that will still be left and you will see him punch that out in just a minute. It's kind of neat how that works. You would think that when he punches the hole, he would hold the, the shoe over one of them hollow parts on the anvil <coughs> for it to go all the way through, but he don't because if he did, then when he went to punch the hole, that would bend the shoe. So here he just cool the shoe and now he's going to take the punch and go over that hole and punch that little thin piece of metal that's left out. And now that the shoe is cooled, it doesn't bend in a wrong way when he goes to punch that little thin piece out. I've been using this horseshoe for well over 20 years and he usually will use a, a factory shoe, a factory slider on my horses uh, most of the time, um, but sometimes for various reasons he'll have to make a, sl make a slider from bar stock like we just did for this horse. I've seen him draw up shoes and make shoes and draw up toe clips and all kind of stuff. It's amazing what, what a good uh, a good farrier that uses a forge can do. It's amazing to watch. They can take that metal and it seems like they can make anything with it. So he's got his holes punched right there, just kind of flattening out just a little bit. Good and flat, finish cooling it off. A little dunk in the water. Now he made two shoes. I really only showed you the video of one of them. We are putting two shoes on. Now he's going to the grinder just to kind of clean up the corners. That way there's no hard corners, no sharp points on the shoe. Kind of round them edges out a little bit. He puts just a little bit of bevel on those corners that's against the horse's foot. And what that'll do is if he happens, if that shoe happens to stick out past the foot just a little bit and the horse steps on the shoe with his other foot, that'll help that foot to slide off so he don't step on the shoe and, and pull the shoe off. And there's a good look at the finished shoe, the finished product. That's a, that's a good looking handmade shoe. <laughs> now he's putting the shoes on. He made those shoes to fit this horse, which to me it's amazing enough that you can make, take that bar stock and make a shoe that actually looks like a shoe. But to do it and it end up actually fitting a specific horse is, is amazing. I hear people all the time say, well, I shoe my own horses. Well, 
you might can shoe your own horses and do some things, but this kind of work here, you've got to do all the time to keep your skills up. And this is a skill that's developed over years of, of working, years of working that metal. This horse that he's putting these shoes on is, uh, uh, I think this horse is about coming five, late four, early five, I believe. And uh, she's had shoes on consistently for the last year. She uh, So she stands really good. There's nobody holding her. She's not drugged or anything. She's just standing there to get her shoes on. Real, she's really, really good about it. But it didn't start off that way, which is good now. Now he's, what he's doing, he drove his nails, he bent his nails over, and this is where he clenches those nails tight. So he'll clench the nails, and then he'll finish the front of the foot. So there he's clenching those nails down. That's an interesting tool. It'll grab the nail on the bottom side and the top side and squeeze it down. And uh, it'll get, get it clenched down. And he kind of cleans up the foot. He, he's got to say that the work he does on the bottom of the foot is for the horse and the work he does on the top of the foot is for the owner. I think that's kind of funny. The, what, what the top of the foot looks like don't matter to the horse. What's on the bottom matters to the horse. But the owner don't look at what's on the bottom in most cases. They look at what's on the top. So the bottom of the foot's for the horse, the top's for the owner. So now that he got the shoes on, those nails actually countersink into the shoe, into the hole where the shoe is. So the little bit of nail head that's sticking out of the top, he takes a grinder and grinds them off. There's not much there to grind off. And we end up with a finished shoe. So I hope you enjoyed watching the Farrier Handmade Custom Slide Plates. If you are already a subscriber to my channel, I want to thank you for subscribing and sticking with me. If you are not a subscriber, if you would, please click the subscribe button and the bell notification so you get notifications when new videos come out. And there's the finished product. Good looking shoes. Until next time, thank you for watching.